morning, good morning. It is, yeah, good morning. It is so good to be back with you. Um, we, uh, we appreciate so much just uh, allowing my family and I to, to have a week off and spend some time together, uh, but it is always such a joy uh, to come back and fellowship with our church family, and uh, thank you for braving the cold this morning and coming out and uh, fellowshipping, and for those watching online, you know, don't blame you for staying in warm and not hitting those uh, slick roads either, for sure. Um, we are we are excited to worship the Lord today, and and I just want to say a huge thank you to to those who uh, stepped up and did extra last week, Brian stepping in and preaching. Uh, I listened to a sermon this week, and it blessed my heart, and uh, just really appreciate our elders and uh, their handling of God's word. And uh, what, a, what a joy it is to see the family of God come together and, and help out in so many different ways. And I, I realized something this morning. I, I don't say it often, um, but uh, my boys, and, and I typically don't say something because they're my sons, and you just, you know, sometimes you just don't say things. But every Sunday, my two boys wake up before uh, the sun to be able to be here early at 7 o'clock every week with me to help open up the church, get it ready, turn lights on. This morning they were out there 8 degrees shoveling snow and all of that. And I just want to say, Joseph, Preston, thank you very much. I appreciate what you guys do. Um, you know, sometimes as a dad you just assume they, they know it and they know they're appreciated. But I've, I wanted to say thank you to them this morning. Um, if you are visiting with us, there is a uh, guest card in the back seat in front of you. You'll have to reach a little bit. But uh, we want you to fill that out so we can get to know you. Um, also, uh, fill that card out if you have prayer requests, a way that we can pray for. If you want it on the prayer line, we can do that. Our prayer line is through our Faith Life app. You can uh, go there and see the different prayer requests. We have numerous ones right now, different ones having surgery this week. So I'd encourage you to, to lift them up in prayer and uh, engage that way. Um, also, with uh, Christmas Eve coming up and all that, we have uh, two services this year. Uh, it tends to be a full house on Christmas Eve, but with the uh, six-foot distancing, we're going to have two services, one at 3 o'clock. So if you have evening plans, maybe that's a, a good one for you guys to come to this year. And then our normal one at 5 p.m. that we will have at that time as well. So I encourage you uh, to, to come and worship with us as we celebrate uh, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and as we uh, engage this morning together, let's just commit this time as we worship him uh, and let's go to him in prayer. Would you join with me? Heavenly Father, God, we thank you that, that not only do we have a day to recognize the coming of your Son, but Lord, as we, we gather to worship in this season, God, we focus on, on what you did, sending your Son as a, as a baby. God, the, the power that, that is held within that manger God, just the majesty of what you did. So God, as we, as we focus on that this morning, as we sing and lift our voices in, in remembering your coming, God, we ask that you would be honored and glorified. Lord, as we, we gather together this morning, we pray that our fellowship would please you. God, we ask that as we hear from your word that you would challenge our hearts. God, that we, it would impact the way that we live and we think. And Lord, for those having surgery this week, I think of Dick Smith and I think of, of Charlie Hornick. And God, we, we commit them to you. We ask that you would work uh, in and through the doctor's hands. God, we think of our, our missionaries, Kirk and Paula, as Paula has surgery tomorrow morning. God, be with them as well. And I pray that you would work out the insurance uh, situation that they're dealing with as well. So God, we bring all of these things before you. God, we ask that we would 
we would worship you not only in body, but in, in spirit and in heart. So God, thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for a church family to gather together to fellowship and worship you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. That night, there were shepherds staying in a field nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory shone around them. They were terrified, but the angels reassured them. Do not be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will be of great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will receive him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped in snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angels were joined by a host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, heaven on earth, and peace to earth to those with whom God is pleased. Please stand and join us with what child is this? in John chapter 1 verses 10 through 13 he came into the very world he created but the world did not recognize him he came to his own people and even they rejected him but to all who believe him and accept him he gave the right to become children of God they are reborn 
not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. This next song we're going to sing is called Noel. And Noel, I believe it means French to be born or birth. And in this season, we're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're celebrating a God who chose to humble himself enough to become his own creation. I think about that. I think about being a kid and building Legos, right? Then I build a Lego monster. I'm the Lego monster's God. I built it. Would I humble myself enough to become Legos so that I could be built by somebody else? No, I wouldn't do that. But our God did. Noel, he is born. Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave a sign Bow to babe on bended knee The Savior of humanity To us a child is born He shall reign forevermore No
we were a little quick on that song. So my other stuff hasn't come in yet. But this next song, um, Light of the World. Light of the World, um, it says in John 8, 12, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. And we are called to also be a light to this world. Light of the world.
Let's go to this Emmanuel, this God in prayer, shall we? Gracious Heavenly Father, God, we, we come to you now. God, we come to your word. God, I pray that it would challenge our hearts. I pray that it would speak to our lives, Lord. Today, as we look at you for who you are, God, as we see that this was something that you planned, I pray that we would allow your word to change just our view and our perspective. So God, we commit this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, and at this time we'll dismiss our children up through the third grade. As, as we approach this celebration of Jesus Christ, as we approach this, this season, I, I wanted us to, to look at a particular passage. And over the next three times of, of gathering together, this Sunday and next and, and Christmas Eve, I, I want us to look at the passage of John chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. And we're going to look at different aspects of that passage over the next three times that we meet. And, and today, as, as, we, as we look at that passage, we'll be looking at the fact that he planned to come. Next time that we get together, we're going to look at, at him being the light in, in the darkness. And, and finally, the third time, we're going to look at the mess he came to. Um, and, and truth be told, it's, it's still kind of a mess, isn't it? But as we, as we look at those, those three topics in this passage, each time I want us to ask three questions. The first question being when. The second question being who. And the third, why. And I think the why is very important, but we have to ask those other two to, to really grasp the answers of those why questions. So, so as we begin our, our look at this passage, I, I wanted to kind of give you an idea of why, at the very front end, John wrote this gospel. There's three other gospels out there, so why did John write this gospel and we see the answer actually not in the very beginning but towards the end of his gospel in John chapter 20. In John chapter 20 we read, therefore many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples of which John was one of the disciples which are not written in this book that being John but these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. That's the reason that John has written this gospel. You see, as we, as we look at the other gospels, as we, we read through those, we see a lot of miracles. And each gospel is, is written with a, a specific purpose and, and direction. We, we see that in Matthew... Over 20 miracles are recorded for us that Jesus did. When you go to Mark, you see that there's 18 miracles. Luke's gospel records 20. But when you come to John's gospel, up until this verse, there's only seven. There's one more miracle after this passage. Eight miracles. John didn't write this gospel to record for us all the miracles that Jesus did. He wrote so that you and I would understand who Jesus Christ is. John really wants us to know and understand who this man, Jesus, is and was. He wants us to get to know him. And, and in knowing him, you and I can have life. So as, as you look at John's gospel, as you read through it, and, 
And we're not going to go through the whole gospel, but it's a beautiful gospel to get to know this Jesus who loves you and me so much. But in order to, to understand just how much Jesus loves us, just the extent that he brings life, we need to understand the opening verses of this gospel. So I'd ask you to join with me as we focus on these, these 17 verses. I'd ask that you, you follow along and consider the plan that God had. Join with me in chapter 1, verse 1. It begins this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light, which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. For of his fullness we have all received the grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. It's a powerful passage, and I look forward to unpacking it as, as, we, as we go through these next few weeks, as we look at and celebrate Jesus Christ coming, as we celebrate Christmas. As we begin to do this, I, I want us to, to look at and contemplate Jesus planning to come. Consider the wind. Consider the wind. John begins, he opens up, and he takes us all the way back to creation. Think about that. John begins, he looks back, and there's a great impact in understanding who this baby is because we go back all the way to the beginning. I, I figure that's a good place to start, and so did John. He, he, he went back there. In the beginning, Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God. Before anything else was, there was God. And so that's where John chooses to start. It's interesting, when Matthew goes through and he writes his gospel, Matthew begins with, with David, the lineage of David to show that this Jesus that was lying in the manger is the rightful heir to the throne of King David. The promised Messiah from the, uh, the kingly line. As, as Luke begins his gospel, we see that Luke says, hey, you know what? He's not only for Jews, he's for Gentiles too. And, and he says, I'm going to take it all the way back to Adam. And he traces the line of Christ all the way back from Adam. Showing that Jesus is for all men. Mark, he doesn't even deal with genealogies or going back. He just jumps right into John the Baptist and declaring that the Messiah had come. The promised one was here. And so each of the gospel writers have a different focus. But as John begins, he goes to the very, very beginning. 
before anything else was, there was God. That's the win. Before all other things, God. And for us to understand the when even, even better, I want us to, to step back and briefly look at the who. Look, consider with me the who. It, it, John introduces, he says, in the beginning was the Word. Now that's an interesting way to introduce the, the promised Messiah, the, the one who had been looked forward to. I mean, Matthew calls him Emmanuel. We, we see him called the Christ Throughout the Old Testament, we're looking for the Messiah. But John begins, and he describes him as the Word. Word in, in, in Greek is, is logos. It, it summarizes and has that, that complete impact of the, the content of God's revelation. Consider that. There, lying in the manger, is the complete Word of God. The content of what God wants to reveal to man. Logos, the Word, it's, it's to speak. It's many utterances. It's, it's a message. And, and God chooses to speak and, and, and declare through a baby lying in a manger. And John introduces him as the Word. Look with me again at, at verses 1 and 2. John 1, and two, uh, 1, 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Consider what this, 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 this is saying. I know as we read it, sometimes we're like, whoa, I, I, you, you got to stop and pause and actually consider what those words are saying. And John is being very intentional with what he is declaring here. First of all, the word is eternal. In the beginning was the word. If the word existed before anything else was created, then the word is eternal. It has existed from before the beginning. Think about that. That little baby lying there in the manger is eternal. The only thing we know that is eternal is God, right? So he follows it up. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Okay, so now we see there's a relationship. This relationship has existed from the very beginning. There is, a, there is an intimate knowing of God in this relationship. We see beautifully the, the picture of the Trinity becoming a, a part here. He's existed from eternity past. Now he's had, there's this intimacy with God. And then John says, and the Word was God. The Word is God. Allow that to sink in. Not only has the Word existed from eternity past, not only has the Word existed in relationship with God, but now the Word is God. There is a a. a, a, a singularity there there is a oneness it's interesting john's choice of words the word is god the word was god he didn't come into existence later it's interesting, false religions um, take this phrase and they, they add the word was a God. When you go and, and add to that, it becomes a, a theology of polytheism, of multiple gods. And then they go and teach that you and I became, can become gods. And that is false teaching. What God's word here is declaring is the word is God. I'll, I'll give you a real quick clue. The quickest way to recognize false teaching, false religion, 
is whenever they step in, they look at Christ and they either try to add to Christ and what he did, or they begin to take away from Christ and who he is. If they add to or take away from from Christ, it is false teaching. And God's word is explicitly clear here. That both God and the word were one. And that's important to understand. Jesus did not come into existence on the day that he was born and placed into a manger. Jesus did not come into existence when the angel visited Mary and said, you will be with child and he will be the son of God. Jesus existed from eternity past. Co-equal with God. Jesus Christ, the Word, is God. And we have to understand that. John wants to set this precedence. Because everything that Jesus will say and do as he records the the life and, and the heart and the passion of Jesus Christ must be understood and seen through that perspective. Jesus Christ being God when he stepped into eternity, or stepped into time, sorry, he's been through eternity, when he stepped into time, took on flesh, took on humanity. He added that to his deity, never ceasing to be God. When you, when you sing this Christmas away in a manger, consider what you're singing about. Consider what you are actually saying there in the manger. Lay God. And consider the flesh that he took on. The who. John 1.14 says this. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Becoming flesh. Nathan gave the illustration of becoming a Lego. And, and maybe we can comprehend that, that image or that, that illustration But contemplate God. Consider the the limitations you and I have. The limitations of this flesh. And if nothing else, this year has shown how fragile the flesh is. How weak the flesh can be. And imagine being God, creator of the universe, creator of all, and stepping into the flesh allowing those limitations to be placed on you. I I don't know if I'd want to. I mean, honestly, I'd rather become a Lego than, than to be deity, to be God, and step into the flesh. Especially knowing why you are coming. It says that he dwelt among us. That, 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 that word dwelt, it has the, the, uh, the abode. He, he sent up, set up his tent. It has the, the Hebrew word equivalent is, is a tabernacle. Kind of reminds you of something from the Old Testament, didn't it? When they wandered around, they would set up the tabernacle and and there God would come to dwell amongst his people. But here God stepped into human flesh and dwelt among us for a time, for a season. 
I'm so grateful that when he left, he still desires to have his abode with us and sends his Holy Spirit. Isn't that beautiful? So as we, as we look at those two things, I want us to consider the when and the who together and, and look at the powerful and passionate plan that Jesus Christ had. Consider this as you go all the way back to the beginning. Consider as we look at Genesis 1. And if you want to turn to Genesis 1, feel free. It's, it's a wonderful passage and, and has some amazing truths in it. But we're going to just look at it in overview this morning. We already know Genesis 1.1 in the beginning, God. Okay, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, and as you look at that, verses 3 through 5, it, it states that God created time we see that there is morning there is evening day one god created time knowing that at some point he would step into time give himself the restrictions of time think about that as god is creating this for you and i he is understanding that he is creating the limitations that he himself will step into one day how many of you have ever felt that as you're going through life, as, as Christmas draws quicker and, and, and closer, that time is just running out? That there's not enough time? We're constantly fighting the, the difficulties and the restrictions of time. And as you go through the, the creation story and, and events there, we see that everything that God creates is spiritual spoken into existence the very words of god speak what you and i see know understand touch feel into existence the word of god brought forth creation i love that as you read through it you see time and time again god spoke and it was it's amazing how creation obeys the word of God. But then there was one part of his creation. He takes the dirt and he forms with his own hands. Man. On day six, we see that God forms man. And then he breathes life into him. The breath of life. John, as he opens up, he, he declares that, that life is found in Jesus Christ. In the Word, there is life. Not only is there, there physical life, and we see that from the very beginning, but there is spiritual life that comes through the Word as well. But consider this, as, as Jesus is creating, and, and we see that in verses 14 through 19, God creates the stars, the sun, and the moon. You know what's absolutely amazing about that to me? Is when God was creating the heavens. When you look up tonight and it's going to be clear, and you look at the stars and the planets and, and all that's there, when God breathed into existence the galaxies, he did so with an intent. It's a fact that we can send a, a rocket to Mars and land on there and, and get information about Mars and it's way out there, but you, we can land it exactly where we want it. You know why? Because in the galaxy, in, in, in space, there is order. Because God is a God of order. And when God created the galaxies, he spun the galaxies into order. The orbits were set in place. So much so that at the exact time there would be a star that would announce his birth. So much so that the planets would line up at the very point when he would give his life for your sin and mine and there would be darkness upon the land. A physical darkness. 
And I believe it was both a, a divine thing and a celestial thing. God, when he spoke the universe into order, he said it for the exact moment he would give his life for you and me. Think about that. And man was not even created yet. On day three, verses nine through 13, we see that God creates vegetation, trees, plants, all of that, knowing that there would be a tree one day that would sprout and grow, that he would cause to grow. And that tree would be chopped down and used to spread his arms apart on the cross. It's important you and under, I understand the word. And when he became, not came into existence, how he has existed. From the very beginning, he planned to come for you and me. As he formed mankind from the clay, and breathe life into him. He knew the hurt that would, that would be bringing to his heart. He knew the burden that he would one day carry on Calvary for mankind. Knowing his plan to die for all mankind. Let that sink in. Not only is he amazing and majestic, but he actually planned to do this. If that baby in the manger is God, and if he is instrumental in creation, then he knows all things. God is all-knowing. There is nothing that escapes his attention. And he knew exactly what he was doing and for what purposes. So it begs the question, why? Why would he do this? Why would the word come? I truly can't fathom the answer to the why, but as we look at the pages of Scripture, as we look at what John declares throughout his gospel, we see the Word has been communicating from the very beginning. What a beautiful way to describe the Son of God as the Word. The Word, communication. God wanting to communicate with you and I from the very beginning. From the very beginning when man sinned, God communicated a promise that he would one day send the Messiah, send someone who would restore that relationship between man and God. God communicated his promise. Through, through Moses, he communicated his law. His perfect, pure law that would show that you and I are hopeless and helpless without him. And it would show our sin and our desperate need for a Savior. Throughout the prophets, we would see that he communicated over and over with the people and, and the people of the world, both Jew and Gentile, God's will and God's warnings for mankind over and over again, we see God communicating with man the Word. And then throughout history, we have seen Him give us the Scriptures. We call this the Word of God. Why? Because this is God communicating with you and me. God is a communicator. God wants you and I to know Him. He wants a relationship. 
And if God had communicated in those ways, that would have been enough. But God chose to communicate one additional way. God sent his son. God came, dwelt among us. Emmanuel, God with us. Why would he communicate that way? Why would he choose to communicate in person? First of all, sometimes God seems far, far away. So he came to be personal. And when he sent his son, he communicated in the most powerful way his love for you and me. I love how John describes this love and this reason of why in John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Look at what it says with me. John says this, or he records this. The very words of Jesus tell us the why. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his, so the son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. We needed him to come. We needed the free gift that Jesus offers. The Word made flesh. John declares this and shares this so that, remember, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. What a powerful, passionate plan God had for you and for me in coming. And even though he came as a baby, his coming was powerful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, as we bow our heads before you this morning, God, as we contemplate you coming to us, that you would give your son, not that we deserved it, God, but because you loved us. God, thank you for that love. Thank you for communicating that love in such a powerful way. God, as we continue to look at your coming, as we continue to contemplate Christmas, God, may who you are and what you did change our way of thinking, our way of living. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless and stay warm out there. It's a little cold. Have a wonderful day.